morning, everybody. Good morning. Hello. Good to see you. Andy, good morning. Good to see you again. Dean, good to see you. Early education matters. The early years are the formative years of a child's learning journey. This is the window where literacy, numeracy and values are anchored. A time where we hope to build on that curiosity, develop their confidence and get them to enjoy learning. A good preschool is where it all begins. Thank you, Minister, for joining us. Thank you, panelists. Kindergarten comes from a German word, which means garden for the children. It also suggests that it's a place for play. So I'd like to ask your opinion on what preschool education should be like. Preschool should be an environment where our kids can be children. Mm. There are three important elements. One is learning through play, where the kids get to explore and enjoy going to school. Two, learning social skills, to be gracious, kind, and three, is less obvious to many parents, early childhood is the best years to nurture a strong foundation for bilingualism. Are we talking about like moving away from like an academic-based preschool to a more play-based? Not moving away, but riding on the strengths of what we have in our school system and learning through a program for active learning. I met a couple of 10-year-olds, primary four. They were building cars outside the classroom, they said. I have a solar car. I want to show you that it works. We were under fluorescent light. It didn't work. <laughs> but they were so happy. I said, well, you go outside. When it works, you call me. Mm. And they did. And you can see the sparkle in their eyes. That is part of learning through play. And when you get older, we call it applied learning. It's very important to connect what we learn in the classroom, go beyond and apply it towards life. Developing the mind and developing the equivalent in skills. We cannot just focus on academics. There are many other parts of a child's development that we should focus on. Children remember best when they touch, see, listen and taste. Sensory learning experiences help children bridge the experience with a concept and that can then be transferred into another learning context. Yes, in our preschools, we encourage the children to learn naturally, learn about the environment, what is sweet, what is sour, these are very natural ways where young children pick up skills. And in this learning environment, we hope to stimulate through indirect means, not the road learning where we drill the techniques, we get them to learn the ABCs. Yes. So you're paying more attention to the embodied experience besides just academic experience? Yes. Nowadays, a lot of teachers are getting our children to go out of the classroom. Learning is not confined to the classroom. We could bring our children for an excursion, like to the sea aquarium. Bridging class learning with the world. Yeah. Experiential learning, that's the direction we are going. Yes. My son is currently in a public preschool. I moved him from another school. I just wanted my kid to play and make friends. But I was having problems because other parents wanted them to learn academic stuff, like how to read, how to hold a pen when they are three. And to me, that's actually quite ludicrous. I have a very similar experience with Andy. I was searching for a play-based preschool. I found Montessori to be a good in-between. But even when I was in Montessori, during parents-teacher conference, a lot of parents will ask, oh, when are you preparing my child for primary one? I wanted the kid to be happy in the environment. They'll be studying for the next 20 years yes. or longer. At preschool age, I really just want them to play and have a good time. We need to acknowledge a lot of the concerns that parents point out in transitioning to primary school. Mm. Maybe we can just kind of set that record straight. A lot of parents are kiasu. They want the kid to be prepared for primary one yes. by K1, by four or five years old. Parents have a very different view of what preschool education yeah. is. Yes. While the government is trying to do more outdoor sensory activities, parents are still worried about primary one. What is our role as parents, 
I'm a parent. Do you bring extra stress to the educators and ask, how come my kid is not ready for primary one? Or didn't score an A? Or would you be asking, is my kid developing good relationships with his friends and everything else? Is he learning good values? Is he asking questions? Why do we go to parent-teachers conference and ask, how come my kid did not get this grade? Why not the extra mark? And I get emails asking me about a specific teacher and asking me to intervene for that one mark. I think that's a gross overemphasis on grades. And in the larger space of education, are we actually educating for life or educating for that one mark? I think we need to educate parents. The parents are in the red race with the children. So they feel like they need to speak up for their kid. They want their kid to be the best. When yes. my kid started primary one, I felt bad for him because he wasn't adequately prepared for primary one. And it's not because of the preschool. It's because I made the choice for my kids to enter into a preschool, which is more free play, play-based, social skills. So when he entered into primary one, he wasn't very prepared and he didn't want to go to school. He felt worried that he was not on power. But is he okay now? He's okay now because I had to give him extra classes so that he could... Do you think he would have survived if you didn't intervene and just let him try and catch up on his own? I think he might, but as a parent, I felt bad. So I think it would be helpful to find out what kids need to know prior to getting to primary one. I think if you're talking about academic learning, it can work two ways. If the child is not ready to write, I don't think it's right for us to force the child to learn. But right now, what's happening in preschool is that lots of teachers are giving them practice to learn. To okay, wait, wait, wait. But when I go to primary school, yep. how will my child be embraced happily and saying like, versus, oh, you are a little bit lacking? What do they need? In my opinion, I think they need to be resilient and they need to have an open mind to pick up learning. I always believe that you cannot assess school readiness on an academic basis. Could you give it an example? I think that would be helpful. Okay, for instance, I'm just basing on how we prepare K2 children okay. so that when they go into primary school, at least to be prepared for what to expect. We could give them like a picture and we ask children to either write the words that they see in the picture. So it could be, I'm just using the background for inspiration. They could write the name of the fish, they could write coral, they could write the colour that they see. If the child is ready, they could proceed to writing statements. Like, I see a big fish, I see three corals, for instance. Right? That's quite a lot for a, five, a six year old. Oh, five you would be surprised, they actually can do it. But Mangali, I, I saw a different aspect of Lilian's question. Mm -hmm. She's interested in testing the child, even though in the interactions with her, we actually do not want, at this young age, to test the child. So this comes back to what we are saying. Sometimes we actually prefer a certain way to teach our child, but when it comes to talking to a teacher, what do we need to prepare our children for? So it's a very interesting dilemma, isn't it? What, what I'm trying to address is I'm sure parents are stressed and this yes. is what we hear all the time, right? Yeah. So are they, are they over-preparing? If they're over-preparing, it's because they might not know actually this is all they need. Yeah. When you say a few sentences, that could mean a lot of things. It's vague, yes. a few words. So to me, for a six-year-old to write, there are three corals, it's pretty hefty. <laughs> and, so, and who set the standards? I'll take the answer from a different perspective. It's basic literacy, basic numeracy skills. I don't really specifically say that they must write 10 sentences or you must add to 100. Our educators trust our teachers. When they receive the children at primary one, they will have a gauge. Learning through play does not stop at six. We'll try to extend it to primary one and two I know the anxieties of parents, so finding that sweet spot is an ongoing process. I really don't think yes, it's the parents. Exactly. It's the school system, it's the education system that, that makes the parents feel like they need to enter into the rat race. I would like to yeah. kind of qualify again, like in, in Northern Europe, you know the kids at seven or eight, they're not even expected to know their ABCs. They will learn yes. that when they get to school. So if I'm now saying, oh, please go play and have the embodied experience, taste your apple, but write and spell the apple, please, isn't that very <laughs> contradictory? <laughs> well, well, maybe let's run an experiment. Suppose the education minister says, we don't need to learn our ABCs until eight years old. Mm -hmm. Would you do that? Yes, yes. Would you oh, do that? Absolutely. I will embrace it. <laughs> That'll be interesting. I will totally embrace it. So the entire school system has to change then. You mean society? Yeah, society needs society. to change. It's a season for everything. When they are younger, do you want to ground them 
solely on academics or do you want to have that period where they enjoy their learning, develop the innate curiosities and have sound values? And when they are no longer toddlers but little adults, we can focus on developing the mind on a good foundation. If I pick up your point just now, it is not just the school system, it's society that needs to move. And I hope through a discussion like this, we can move the needle. I think it's very important that the parents are on board with the same idea. The challenge comes again when they are working with parents because of the expectations. It's like a vicious cycle. Sometimes if we don't change the parents' mindset, it will come back to haunt the schools and yeah. the preschools. And then we struggle in trying to convince the parents as well. I fully agree with you on that. That's why MOE has moved and will continue to move away from the overemphasis on grades. I like to see that the teacher is aware of the different learning capabilities of each child or different learning styles. Because I would imagine we tend to like have a system of education that only appeals to one type of learner, maybe the left brain learner. So understanding where my child's emotional maturity might be as well, I have to cater to their tool set to each child differently. The content of the curriculum might be the same, but your approach from verbal to non-verbal cues should be present. So that would be my expectation of a good educator in any sense. So that's a very demanding thing to ask well, from an educator. Well, it's actually the very things that Minister is saying, the sort of critical skills that we might be missing. There's always a gap between what we ideate and what is practiced. And the more we can reduce that, encourage each other as parents to move away from that, we will arrive in the space that we all want earlier. As an Asian society, we have always the emphasis on a good academic yeah. grounding. But let's temper it down. Then maybe there'll be more of us that would feel less pressurised. And that is when the school system partnering our parents can move the learning journey for our children. Interestingly, we have two sets of parents here who are quite pro-play and less emphasis on academics. Another group of um, parents who value the academics. While we're changing the system, influencing the trainers and the educators, how are we helping the parents? It is not so easy to let go. Mm -hmm. Even though we think we are converts. Mm -hmm. I went to a preschool, young kids like yours, three years old, and they were doing Play-Doh, making nice figurines. The researcher was telling me, Minister, bet you a cup of coffee. The educator will interfere within 30 seconds. Guess what? She won it within 8 seconds. <laughs> In the educator, a young lady said, oh, this is how you do it. Mm. We must take conscious effort yeah. and really step back, let them play. And I have a larger point to make here. It is also the environment where they learn to handle risks. Mm. Look at our playgrounds today. When I was young, the playground where I climb is really the climbing yes. adventure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you yeah, remember that? Yeah, now they're padded, yeah. you know, yeah. like no sharp corners. And they are not much taller than me. They are really yeah. low, low. So, now, if parents yeah. don't consciously take a step back and reduce the overprotection of our kids, how do we actually get them to embrace risks when they grow up 25 years, 50 years down the road and get our kids to have that outlook that it's okay, I may fall, but I will learn how to cope with the risks. That is very important. So you look at our playgrounds today, every time I go back to my ward, I walk around, I will lament. And I'm telling my town councils, let's review the playground. It's not dangerous enough. <laughs> well, I don't want it to be dangerous. on the ground. <laughs> no, not quite there. Don't go to the extreme. They're teasing you. Yeah, I know. Don't go to that extreme. A safe environment, mm -hmm. but provide challenges so that they will learn how to use their psychomotor skills mm -hmm. to take care of themselves. And they can make calculations on their own, right? Actually, I switched preschool. I, like, I like to stalk my kids. <laughs> like, I'll go out, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up my kids. I'll reach there like maybe 15 minutes earlier and watch. You're right, the educators, they will say, oh, no, do it this way and do this. Or when they're telling a story, they say, like, oh, you have to sit this way. Singaporeans are very obedient and we do things the right way. But we are moving in a direction that is innovative and we have to be different, think out of the box. How will our children be learning differently? Well, that also raises the issue about individuality in a society that's so homogenous, like Singapore. We tend to be approaching the same topics in the same way with the same queries and outcomes. Every individual is a unique self. Like, everything is planned out for them. 
Like, if you want to be a scientist, then you don't have to put so much emphasis on your languages. And they're like, oh, no! They are told what to study, and they don't know what they're studying for. I feel that's an issue, and even for preschool, they don't really know who they are and what they want to do. I don't quite agree. Even though if I'm interested in science, I think language has an important place. In our secondary school system, we create applied learning programs to spur the interests of the children, the academic and application part. I may not be an all-rounder in all the subjects, but if I'm good in my STEM, good at coding, or interested in robotics, I can take my passion there and make a career out of it eventually. Would it be right to say that you are suggesting that the system's producing automatons versus children who might be able to think independently or creatively? What I'm trying to say is that the system doesn't encourage students to actually find out what their passions are, what they want to do. It's more like making them into robots. When students know what they're studying for, what they are working hard for, they will actually do it. You don't have to tell them to do it. But when they are just studying for the sake of studying, for the sake of grades, that's where they start to fall off and turn into unhappy, indifferent people. I think that's very insightful. Hmm. So, as we are saying, how to develop and nurture that joy of learning. You look at what we have achieved in the Southeast Asian Games, where the kids are passionate, nothing to do with grades. They'll wake up at 5 a.m., jump into the pool, do two, three hours of training, rush to school, complete a long day, come back to the pool. So passion drives learning. It doesn't matter whether it's academics or non-academics. And this is really one of the things that we must put into our kids at the preschools and get it to germinate, flourish throughout the learning journey. Mm. I do acknowledge that some parts of our school system is still in transition. There may still be some testing, and we want to reduce that overemphasis on academic results. It will take our schools some years to transit into a different outlook of strengthening our core learning and bringing applied learning for the kids and provide them the best opportunities to succeed in life in the uncertain world. Minister, PM Lee has recently announced some key changes to the preschool education. What are your views on them? Parents and children are really at the heart of all these policies. We want every Singaporean child to have affordable access to a good preschool, regardless of their background. And we want all these policies to provide fulfilling and attractive careers for our educators. The secret sauce in a successful education system are teachers. Mm -hmm. The setup of the National Institute of Early Childhood Development is an important step to raise the professional qualifications of our teachers. We must have a good career structure where our early childhood educators are paid at market rates mm. and recognised for their contributions. I hope that within a period of five to ten years, the overall quality of our entire preschool landscape will provide an environment where they don't just learn about being intellectual, but also values, confidence and risk management at a young age. All the tacit things that we spoke about. We are building 50 or so kindergartens to change the outlook and put this pedagogy in place. In Finland, the education system is ranked very, very high. They were at the bottom and there was a change because the policy makers decided that the teachers have to be excited and fulfilled and they have to be of a certain calibre to participate as an educator. Is that the track that we're wanting to head towards as well? I agree with the approach. I would like to see our educators coming to school each day with the joy of teaching and to teach kids yeah. the joy of learning. When I was a teacher, that was the passion that I had wanting to work with the children. And I'll transfer that same passion when I'm teaching the pre-service teachers. What do you mean by pre-service teachers? Pre-service teachers would mean fresh O-level students. We train them first before sending them into the preschools. And I'm actually looking forward to the NIEC because we are finally getting the long-awaited stamp that we are a profession and we are moving up. And I think that would naturally boost the professional image of educators. I'm just going to ask everybody, what do you think is most critical to our child's development in their formative years? Shall I start with you? 
I believe um, what's important in preschool education is the strong working relationship between teachers and parents. We all must be on the same page that preschool is not just to give children the head start, but it's to lay the foundation for future learning. We want them to be passionate learners, have an appetite for risk, and to move forward with that positive learning attitude. That's what preschool should be about. Definitely social and emotional skills is going to last them the whole lifetime. Once they start with a good foundation, we will be able to see that translating academically, yes. work, growing up, being fathers themselves. I think this will take them far beyond just education. I always summarise parenting into three different parts. First part is definitely health, something that is very important. We need to take care of them. The second is character, morals, courage, be kind and compassionate. Lastly, it's finding their strength and guiding them towards their passion. These are important during the formative years. When we move into the preschool sector, it must be also about making sure that we build up a child to its fullest potential and to see every Singaporean child have that platform to succeed. And when they succeed, always remember to bring fellow Singaporeans along. My individual wish is to see each child enjoy their preschool years. Well, it's evident that we're all very invested in our children's education, whether as parents or educators. With the recently announced measures, educators can look forward to careers that are more attractive and fulfilling, and our children will be better prepared with a great start to lifelong learning. Would that be correct? Absolutely correct. In partnership with parents. Thank you everybody for being here with us. Thank you for taking our questions. We'll be back for more discussions about how our children might be prepared for a challenging and changing world. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your views with me.